Okay, can you introduce myself first? Uh, my name is Fazian, but most of them know me by my online school name or something. So, as I think I'm not so before the page, I manage, I'm, I'm an Android developer for two years plus already, and I'm also doing uh, game servers kind of stuff as well. So, uh, I do a lot of stuff. So uh, let's talk about what I'm doing now. I'm actually a technical lead in uh, SPEX Mall. It's a Singapore company, but I'm based in Malaysia. Looking. So I'm the technical lead in Apps Mall, but basically we are just a two-man company. So I'm the developer, and I have another designer. So there's two of us only. So basically, I build Android, I build iOS, I build the backend as well. So, so this basically I started building Android uh, back when I doing my final year project. I'm pretty sure some of you are doing your final year project. So. Um, Actually, my first app actually came just before my final year project, but we'll talk about it later. So, and I'm also an intern for uh, Intel, but I'm based in Germany as well. So, I feel, uh, in, for Intel, I feel a peer-to-peer... Okay, so for Intel, I'm, uh, I'm building a peer-to-peer -peer system for them for uh, something called digital signage system which is something if you go to shopping mall, you see the screens actually showing something similar all the time. So I'm building that for them by running in peer-to-peer -peer base and we're doing it in Java and probably that's, the, that's, that's why I want to mention it because I learned Java mostly from that project because in peer-to-peer, -peer, there's a lot of networking, performance, memory, CPU that you really have to uh, optimize, uh, optimize it because we build it on we running the server on Atom machine. Uh, Atom machine is pretty, I would say, it's pretty low and even worse than your <laughs> high <iPhone, laughs> power. So anyone who uses Atom know how bad is it. So basically, we build a peer-to-peer -peer ser engine server on that machine. So RAM and it's actually capturing screen live. So there's a lot of load that we actually have to optimize up. So I think that helps a lot when you come to develop Android because Android is mostly running on a low power system that uh, you really need a lot of stuff. I mean, in 5.0, there's something called a render trait which actually helps you. That's why you can see a lot of cool animations being uh, produced in 5.0, especially the Reaper effect because there's a new stuff called a render trait. So in the older versions, uh, we have a bit more constraint in what we can do. So uh, basically, and uh, my previous work, I'm basically an Android developer for AppStream, which is a company based in Amazon Incubator. And also I work for another startup which is based in Tangsa. And if you notice, at one point of time, three months, I actually have two full-time jobs. Because I work from home, so basically I'm helping them with all stuff. So having two jobs at one time is quite a Okay, so this is my first Android app, which I started in May 2012. That time is, I think ICS just came up, four of my work just came up. So, uh, a lot of devices still probably still running Gingerbread. I have a lot of phones that are still running Gingerbread. So, and 4.0 came out. There's 3.2 in between, but 3.2 is more like for tablets. So, 4.2 is like, okay, now the phone get follows, action bar. So, how we want to make this thing actually work specs on my 2.3 phone? So, uh, that's a lot of challenges, that, challenges. So, but it's something more, but I don't really talk much about it. So, uh, I have, I built this for Windows desktop, for Windows phone, for my mini project. And I finally decided to build an Android version as well. So, it's basically a MLS uh, reader, which means it reads your MLS announcement, that notify you about any new announcement, so you don't want to miss anything that lecture last week answered last night, which I miss all the time. So, and you can actually download lecture notes. I think most of 
but at, at, during my university time, I basically just don't download notes. And when I go to the class and try to connect to the Wi-Fi, you know how hard it is to download the notes from there. And sadly, it's no longer a pay store because uh, it's not working, so I have no time to maintain it. There you go. So this is my final project. I have, I, I, I will correct myself. And I will mostly talk about uh, a consumer side of developing Android. Means you really have to build something from your phone side. Five point is still too new. You probably won't have a five point device. You probably still using some ICS, KitKat, or Jelly Bean device. You want to have this kind of cool stuff back uh, in your phone as well, right? But uh, so I'll, I'll probably talk more about it later. So I'll go through my previous experience, share with you the stories I learned from each project, and what you should do and what you shouldn't do. So this is my mystic game, my final year project. I'm not sure my lecture is here, but I've been told that you'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a profit trading game which I built on Android and you can see the anime that last time when Google Maps came out, I think for Android Maps, Google Maps actually changed for three version or something like that. Even JavaScript and V2, V3, something like that. So the old days, it's so hard to implement the Maps SDK and nowadays it gets so much easier. So uh, it's basically a trading, it's like something like Foursquare and Line and Red if you guys play it before. So, and uh, this project I deal a lot with Google services and API. So uh, this project is a lot network based because it's like a social networking things. So uh, what I did back then, there's no cool stuff like Google Holly or something like that. I built my own network library for Android. So I can, I, and I keep using that library until now. Even my latest project still using the same library. So that's uh, one thing I really enjoy <laughs> and really proud of that what I did in this project, and that's all. After that, this project is basically dead. So I, I took that network library out and I keep improving it for 10 plus Android projects, and it's still running up to date, and I don't have to change, change it yet. Steve, I mean for us, but for businessmen, okay. So, 
What's the likely do is very simple. You just give it the PDF, it throws you the bitmap. No other extra UI stuff. You have to build your UI, means you're scrolling all through PDF pages, scaling PDF pages. They give you the function to scale. Then you have to build the UI and use their library. So it's quite expensive for simple stuff like this. So when I built this app, I found I, I deal with a lot of performance issues. Bitmaps in, in Android, bitmaps like super pain in the ass, seriously. Because you have to deal with a lot of memory issue. PDF like this, because they render it at really high resolution. Let's say you know your tablets were they do mostly based uh, built in for tables, so tablets got that super super high resolution, at like two thousand times one thousand something. If you look into the memory, a single, let's say a 4K size image, will probably take like what 20, 30 megabytes of RAM away. So you cannot have three running at the same time as well. That's how limited, and back then the RAM, standard RAM is like 512 and 1 gig, and your apps are quite limited to the amount of RAM you can use. So that's a lot, a lot of issue. And obviously you have to multi trade because rendering bitmap, a bit high resolution bitmap and PDF takes a lot of time. You scroll it, the page will be blank, and another one or two seconds, then go up. So how you need to handle all this so the user won't feel it, or you won't feel when you... You can scroll through 10 pages and still the uh, user still feels smooth. And also task queuing. Because if, let's say, I'm rendering the first page, I scroll it to the 10th page. By right, I don't want to render second, third, fourth, fifth page. It will waste a lot of resources. So how I want to throw out... Because when you scroll, you probably pass 3, 4, 5, it will be queued out. But what if I suddenly hit 10? All these queue up must be re rearranged again and the priority should be put to page 10 or something like that. And really high quality demand. Nothing can, when they score, they don't want to feel any lag. Even you have, you know, sometimes you use Android, you scroll through some list, if it lags for a while, that lag they don't accept. And how they stress test the app is very funny as well. They have this PDF, actually, if you see the second small image, the PDF page loaded, they score. And while they score, they score it with five fingers and they score it very hard. It's like no one actually uses a PDF app like right? that. You scroll PDF app with your five fingers and do it damn fast. You know? And until the app crashes, they're happy. <laughs> and when they're happy, you set up. You have to fix up, figure out what's the issue. So that's, that's that kind of testing level they do. They're, they're, they're not developers, they're just business people who try to crash your app and to make sure your day, say, so that our user won't crash it, but your user will scroll five fingers at one time. So that's, that's something uh, with commercial app. So I'll, I'll put this in a This is just a prototype I built for them, but it's not an uh, uh, actual app. So what we did is, they wanted me to build an Android app and as well build another version using JavaScript, like phone gap. So I know a lot of you guys probably are web developers, just now you don't raise your hand like it. I know the truth. You guys probably touched HTML or JavaScript before already. So, in the, the best thing about building on JavaScript and HTML kind of thing is basically you can run it on iOS or Android. So, something like PhoneGap, Titanium, Accelerator, something like that, will actually help you speed up your development process. So, I, I, I just want to share about my opinion how I try Android and this kind of thing. What's the differences between them? So, and of course, it's, it's JavaScript, HTML, CSS, it's something you're familiar with, something you can just type with. Really. So for me, I'm not a web developer, so for, I, I don't really enjoy building in JavaScript. Then the, the problem is, with this kind of JavaScript apps, you lose a lot of native power to code, right? You want to access camera, you have to go through some connectors or something like that. And that's what I find is uh, not so user, user, uh, developer friendly. And there's also a, lot, a, a few other stuff that if some of you are more familiar with, let's say C Sharp, there's Salmonry Studio, which is quite good, you can build quite an in app, but uh, at the loss of some, the, the APK size will be slightly bigger. So it's, it's just, I want to just share what the differences between native one and this kind of websites I built both of them and try both of them and how I feel about it. So, uh, yeah, so that, like I said, uh, I'll, I'll be probably covering more on like, building mobile apps because I know it's, it's an Android event. You build apps for commercial use purpose, they probably want an Android iOS, you cannot run away from that. And so, when it comes to this kind of situation, a lot of companies, they want to just cut costs. You want to build once, 
forget about other things. So they will choose something like Xamarin, which gives you the native performance, but you can achieve new ones and you can run on Android and iOS. So, and other stuff which I covered before, PhoneGap. And yeah, these are more like web browser based. And that's, this, is, this is something I want to bring up. I know a lot of you from the web background. So when you come to mobile background, you take a lot of the technique you use in web into mobile apps. It's something different. In mobile apps, you have to, you have to think a lot of stuff like battery usage. I know a lot of people don't care about battery usage, but when you build apps like what apps, you don't want to have what apps taking up 40% of battery doing nothing. So when you build something like that, you have to figure out how to conserve battery. How And on web, usually you have internet all the time. You have connection to server. On mobiles, you don't have that luxury. You can cut off on your 3G, your Wi-Fi reconnecting, or sometimes your Wi-Fi just stuck. Don't know what, whatever happens. So uh, that's something you have to really, something really different from what you do on web. And basically, web you live on the browser. Native, uh, you building Android OS, you live inside the OS itself. So this is also another app which I built. It's a Wi-Fi app, and this is like um, the second worst project I've ever been in. That's even worse. So look at it. Uh, this is when some this is a Hong Kong airline project. It's a Wi-Fi project. You know, you know, you go. Uh, shopping mall, you see TM Wi-Fi, they go in, they ask you for login, all those things, right? I mean, you need to be a TM subscriber to log in, and that's what they do. So this is for their Hong Kong airline, uh, all their passengers, so you go to Japan, then let's say they have a lot of Wi-Fi for Japan, and I think if they are, they want to Taiwan, because Taiwan has a lot of 7-Eleven, right? So they have all these Wi-Fi routers at 7-Eleven, which you can log into if you use this app. And why I say this is the second verse app is because the designers built for mobile, uh, built for, built for, it's a web designer, it's not a mobile designer. So when you see a lot of stuff, you can look at the registration screen. You think if someone really fills up, try to fill up all this, you know, old school, back kind of thing, you're, okay, your first name, confirm your name, confirm your password, confirm your address, confirm your phone number. And this is not all you know, there's still more, I think I cannot scroll it down only. So the registration scheme is like so... I don't know, this is an like old school web designer. I know nowadays the web designers use like login to Facebook, login to Google Plus, kind of thing. But this is something you shouldn't do that. Build, it's like, you know, web designs into mobile phone in terms of UI designs. And oh, this app actually had the worst uh, testing cycles. Um, that, that, like I said, the staff is in Taiwan, right? So basically, I'm sitting in an office in Damansara. I'm, I just wait all day so they can, the Taiwan guys can test the Wi-Fi is it working. If it's not working, they send it back to us. Then we fix, we wait another two, three hours in the office doing nothing. So that's been the worst experience ever to do an app. A lot of time spent with and cannot go anywhere because anytime the Taiwan gets sent back stuff, you have to process it. And if they send back logs, you have to process it immediately. Really. So, luckily, I got off. Oh, this, this one, like the worst, 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 worst ever project I actually been in. Uh, actually, both of these in the same company. Uh, the, 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 the relationship is a bit weird. Uh, maybe some of you before still like. So the Hong Kong airline guys find the uh, big MNC in Malaysia, big MNC sub it to a digital marketing company, then sub it to my company, then back to me. So the whole chain of command is whole. Oh. So how bad is this project is I it's it's a it's a joint effort project. Uh, we have it's like their team, they cannot cope with all these tasks. So they employ us as a subcontractor to build this together with them. So that's that's fine, right? More people easier to do stuff, but it's worse when the, the students, the, I call them students because they are just fresh grad like me. They actually don't know anything about JSON. Something like, what is JSON? You have to explain what JSON is to him. And you have to, you have to build an Android and iOS app with them, people like that. So, it's, and, and the way they structure the whole Android app. Because you come, when you come from like, I feel they come from a web background. Because when you come from a web background, Web doesn't really have a state. Go one page, go another page. There's no the back button doesn't really like 
the Android back machine because Android is more like a stack based thing. You throw up activity or above, above them and even iOS, you throw above them, you just back and there's a main some there's a lot of stuff you can do within like the Java kind, you can have a centralized control like that. Which web doesn't have, web, web is basically stateless. So they bring that thing into this uh, when they're developing this stuff. And the worst thing is the senior guy have a few junior guys under him. They, because the junior guys do the app differently, like yeah, I'm using this pattern, I'm using this pattern, I'm using this pattern. So you want to generalize it. So it forced them to implement some uh, interface only. I, I think I got too, a bit too technical. So the whole thing is like a mess. A lot of unnecessary stuff is in it. And imagine, uh, imagine, uh, and how Android fast stuff from one activity to another is mostly through bundles, basically. So bundles is like, imagine it's like a, a database. So uh, when you pass, let's say you from login screen, you pass it to the next screen, you usually pass this kind of extra data, but that's, that's not how we structure it in Android. Most of the time we have like a main class which handle all those kind of things. But for them, from login, from the time you log in, that data go to the next screen. So let's say I, I, I log into this app already. I go into a product screen. Okay, I can see a list of products. So basically, the product screen, you click already, you can pass the information of that product into a new screen. So I show more pro uh, information about the product. So what they did is, they have this same database storing this information. So even you back, the thing is still in the thing, in the bundle. Even you go open up your user information, that, that thing will carry your user information as well. So as time goes, the thing get bigger, 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 and that's how they code it. So I, I would say it's, it's it's not working. It's working, but it's not efficient. And I can't even train how they actually figure out a way to do it that, like this. So and basically, apps are too many fragments. Um, I know Androids like to promote fragments a lot, but some developers, uh, even myself, don't really like to and, and don't really enjoy using fragment as much. And so when I go into this FAC, they have one activity and 40 fragments. Oh, that, that, that kind of experience is a bit too hard to process. So uh, that's uh, uh, yeah. Talking about stateless, uh, I just recall how I how I can use it. So basically, when you go in a screen. You go to the next page, you put the next page on it, so you click back, you go back to this page, right? So what they did is they put this page, so go to the next page, you throw this page out and you put in the new page. So basically when I hit back on the next page, I need to know what's the back one because it's no longer down there. I I move it like I need to like okay, this page forever back to this page. I do manual code it. So that's the, the weirdest programming practice that I, I, I ever seen. So um, and this is one of the great things about Android. Uh, this is an app for cell phone. It's actually being pitched up for new mobile as well. So what it does is, it actually allows you to watch ads and gain your phone credit. So basically you can don't pay for a phone bill which you won't watch enough ads for them. So this is just one way of they doing it. They put it as a widget. Because at first when I've been told to do this, I'm like, who, who want to put an ad in front of your home screen, right? And if I say, for oh, money, you want, oh, okay. But <laughs> you go in the ads, you go in the ads, there's more stuff, you can watch videos, kind of stuff. So you, once you confirm finish watching video, they'll add credits to your phone, you can, so you can get free SMS, free calls, something like that. I'm not sure whether this project has been followed up or not, because this is my Bangsa work, uh, which I no longer work for them, so I don't know what they I actually even built a U Mobile prototype, which I don't know, will it be the U Mobile official app? Um, okay, so okay, so go to what I'm doing now. So what I'm doing now for Xbox is something called uh, Hook, which is a social messaging with a marketplace. So imagine that you buy stuff, you go lay low, to ten, whatever, whichever side you have ten. When you go to that site, mostly you will find the what apps and the what apps that die to buy stuff. So what we want to do is just to centralize everything and put everything together. So you can pay through the app, you can buy through the app, you can check through the app. And when we build this, we thought of like, 
Okay, like in case this doesn't work out, uh, you want to build something really nice, like a, ch a really good chat X, which we can match it out something to like WhatsApp standard. So we built uh, this whole thing. So I can't talk much about this in a bit later time, but this is a GIF on the, the whole app. So as you can see, you can see some 5.0 kind of stuff in it, the uh, ripple effect. Uh, and we build all those MSN kind of uh, and, uh, GIF. And you can draw something and you can send it to friends. Stuff like that. So uh, just go through about it, this roughly. Building an app is I know I know some apps are more like local based, but most of the time you want to build something really much more than your phone itself. You want to have like a net network, you can register user, a lot of stuff. So this requires the back end thing, your PHP back end, your Ruby's back end, whatever you decide to use. So a lot of time you have to design this to fit to the mobile phone as well. You don't send too much data, you don't you only send what required so your phone don't get exhausted, the battery, your especially data pack. That's why when you build code, we actually think about what WhatsApp for example, if you send an image, they actually take another 30% extra of your image size because they actually encode it to string, which like uh get 64 string. So we decide to use something like more binary wise. So we can actually build something that delivers 40 gigabytes. You pay 40 gigabytes. You don't pay anything more. So uh, I think I have to skip because lack of time. But. So this is another fun project in the company, which we just build for fun. Uh, so this is where I use it to learn iOS. So that's I have something to say about this. If I know a lot of you guys will be thinking, is it better to build it, build to start iOS or start Android? So let's put it this way. IOS, uh, probably a kid could start building IOS, but I don't think so with Android. That's the level of uh, differences. It's basically because of the IDE itself. So, uh, so of course, when you build Android apps, 5.0 is nice. A lot, uh, it looks nice, everything like that. But when you come to commercial apps, it's always back backward support and. You face a lot of stupid problem with Samsung uh, and kind of it, 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 it's, it's true, it's true. Okay, so, okay, give you an example. Uh. I view, when I view home, my colleagues actually using Samsung 4.3 S3. So he told me the image are not rotated correctly. I say it's correctly in my phone. I try to emulate it's correct as well. When, why is it correct in Samsung? Then I found it's actually Samsung and HTC. The way they actually store the file was a bit different. So I had to handle that for that two uh, brand of phone as well. So custom Android is quite a, a, a thing. Like, and let's I remember another thing about Samsung is it keeps throw error. The Samsung tablets keep throw error when you try to put some custom string uh, text view into it. And I tried Google out, I still cannot find an answer and finally say it's all oh, it's a Samsung thing. Okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> Uh, Android, there's something called as previously was uh, I talked about is the push messaging in Android called GCM, Google Cloud Messaging. So let's say in iOS, which is powering Tinder Fire, Tinder Fire is quite popular in the US, uh, probably not here. But if you want to build an app using push messaging, <laughs> if you want to build an app using push messaging, you want to notify users about that like, some new notification, and your user happen to run on Tinder Fire, you cannot use GCM because in Kindle Fire, there's no Google Pay. GCM requires Google Pay itself. So that's another thing also you have to handle. So how there's a lot of uh, different kind of stuff where you're doing it. And basically, Android versions. 5.0 are cool, 5.0 are nice, a lot of stuff. How about the 4.0 phone? I don't think anyone else will probably running 5.0 right now, right? We are still using um, all the old, older devices. And it's impossible, like, like my friends, if using S3, S4, you don't want them to face up just because we want to review an app. So, um, so my advice of starting to do Android is get to learn Java. <laughs> uh, one thing you have to take care about is the way uh, Android do it is because Android is using David VM in the old, old, older like 4.3, 4 4.4 4 is optional. In 5.0, they switch to something called Android Runtime. So the way they how they, they do garbage correction, the way they react is slightly different from your Java, how Java 
actually use it. Because Java use the Java version machine. So in Android, they use a different version machine. So in terms of like, like I say, the garbage collection, how they actually reallocate the memory is a bit different. So when in Android, for example, if we have something when you allocate the memory, it actually pops the, the main thread, which causes your UI to lag. So so that's what the main thread is actually doing. Yeah. So this, I'll, I'll, I'll just I just give all this uh, Okay, so uh, today I will release I will release a new app. I'm not that new because it's probably my first app. I'll release this, but with something really nice which you guys can download because it's open source. And what even nicer is I have a lot of libraries inside my network libraries, my doing heavy repo in four point. Oh, and also, so, uh, <laughs> so this is the tool with the new material design. It's a good install. I checked when it's up already. I uploaded just now. It's open source. You can download source from it. And we have a lot of animations you can see. It's only available in 5.0. But this is actually running on my KitKat phone. So it's, you can enjoy Ripple and everything. Although it's not that similar to what. 5.0 has offered like, at least an effort to backport it. It's not a backport but to fake it because graphics is all about faking it. So, so you can actually get it, uh, download the source later on. So basically that's it. Uh, thank you.